Back to acid-base chemistry. Last time we were together, we were talking about calculating pH and pOH and how to undo pH and pOH. And we've done a few examples. So we're going to continue on with the Bronsted-Lowry concept of acid-base chemistry. Now, remember when we were talking about the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acid-base chemistry, that an acid is a hydrogen ion acceptor, I mean a, a hydrogen ion donator, a base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. So when we look at an acid being an acid and a base being a base, okay, let's look at a reaction and let me kind of point a couple of things out to you. Now, when we looked at the reaction, let's take a weak acid, something like HF, aqueous and water, okay? If it reacts with water liquid, then we get H3O plus aqueous, and we get F minus aqueous. Okay, the generic reaction is HA aqueous plus H2O liquid going to H3O plus aqueous and A minus aqueous. Okay? Now, when I look at this reaction, HF donates a hydrogen to the water so that it produces hydronium ion, okay, and the water had to accept the hydrogen to become the hydronium ion. So HF here is an acid, okay, and it happens to be a weak acid. Remember when we talked about weak acids, the hydrogen halides below HF low fluorine were strong acids, but HF was a weak acid. That means water here has to be acting as a base, okay? Because an acid has to react with the base and the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The acid donates, the base accepts, okay? Now, let's look at this reaction running in reverse re direction. The hydronium ion and the fluoride ion, if they react, the hydronium ion donates a hydrogen to the fluoride ion to make HF. So that makes the hydronium ion an acid and the fluoride ion a base. Okay. Under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, a base doesn't have to contain a hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion is a base, but it's not the only base. All right? So let's look at this. HF and F minus, H2O and H3O plus. Okay? If I look at HF and the fluoride ion, F1 minus, they differ by one hydrogen ion. You look at water and you look at hydronium ion, they differ by one hydrogen ion. This is an acid. We know this is an acid. And this, in this situation, was acting as a base. And this was acting as a base. So notice I have an acid and a base here. I have an acid and a base here. These are called acid-base conjugate pairs. A conjugate pair is two substances that differ from each other by one hydrogen ion, okay? One hydrogen ion. So if you take a substance and you remove its hydrogen ion from it, you've got its conjugate base. Now let me give you some examples. We look here, HF and F minus, water and hydronium ion base conjugate acid, acid conjugate base. Ammonia and the ammonium ion. Well, for ammonia to become the ammonium ion, it had to accept a hydrogen ion, so that makes it the base, and the ammonium ion, it's conjugate acid. Water and the hydroxide ion. For water to become a hydroxide ion, it had to give up a hydrogen ion, so water is an acid, the hydroxide ion is its conjugate base. 
Okay. In every Bronsted Lowry acid base reaction, we're going to see two conjugate pairs. Okay? So we're going to look at some reactions and we're going to identify the conjugate pairs. All right, over to where we can work on the board. Let me grab my book here. And we're going to look at problem, let's see, 16.1 on page 690. All right, here are some reactions. with water liquid to give us C5H5NH plus aqueous and a hydroxide ion aqueous and then we've got HNO2 aqueous reacting with water liquid going to H3O plus and NO2 one minus aqueous aqueous. Okay guys, let's identify acid base conjugate pairs. Okay? If I look at C5H5N and then I look for its counterpart on the other spot side, it's C5H5N plus. Okay, now there's one pair. Now, for C5H5N to become C5H5NH+, it had to accept a hydrogen ion. So this is our base, and this is conjugate acid. Here, water is paired with hydroxide ion. For water to become the hydroxide ion, it had to give up a hydrogen ion. So that makes it our acid in this pair. And this is the conjugate base. So a base reacted with an acid to give me a new acid, its conjugate, and a new base. Okay? Now if I come down here and I look at HNO2, it became NO2 one minus. So hydrogen was donated. So that makes this an acid and this its conjugate base. Okay, then the water here should be our base and what we make is a conjugate acid. Now let's look at it. For water to become, to the, become the hydronium ion, it had to accept a hydrogen ion. So I reacted an acid and a base, I get a new conjugate acid and a new conjugate base. In any Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction, you're going to have two conjugate pairs. Okay? Now, when we have a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction and we make a new conjugate acid and we make a new conjugate base, the question becomes, why did the reaction happen at all? I mean, I took an acid and a base, and I made a new acid and a new base. Well, it all has to do with the strength of the acids and the strength of the bases. In an acid-base reaction under the Bronsted-Lowry approach, an acid and a base react, and at equilibrium, the concentrations of the weaker acid and the weaker base should be larger than the stronger acid and the stronger base. So weak side is favored in that there'll be higher concentrations of the weak acid and the weak base compared to the strong acid and the strong base, okay? So we're gonna look at this. Now, 
We're going to look at a chart here. Okay, and then we're going to come back to these reactions. Here's a chart of some relative strengths. Okay. Notice as I go up on the acid side, the acids get stronger. As we go down on the base sides, the bases get stronger. What we see across from each other are acid-base conjugate pairs. There's an acid and there's its conjugate base. There's an acid, there's its conjugate base. There's an acid, there's its conjugate base. Acid, conjugate base. The stronger an acid is, the weaker its conjugate base is. The stronger a base is, the weaker its conjugate acid is going to be. So let's think about the second reaction we were looking at, HNO2. Let's see if this acid is on here. This doesn't have every acid possible on here. It's just a small smattering. I'm going to write a reaction that works with this table. Okay? So, let's take the acid HCN. And let's react it with the base. Hmm, what base do I want to react that with? Let's react it with water. Let's just go real simple right now. Okay, we'll get out of it H3O plus aqueous and CN1 minus aqueous. Okay. Now let's look at the reaction. Now hopefully you have your notes with you. Okay. So here we go. Well, that one's a dead puppy. This is an acid. Conjugate base. Okay. This is our base and it's our conjugate acid. Now, I want to do a head to head comparison between the two acids, HCN and H3O. If we look at the chart, okay. H3O plus is our stronger acid. And if I look at our bases, the CN minus and H2O, CN minus is our stronger base. So I have my stronger acid and my stronger base on the product side. That means that reactant side is favored at equilibrium. Now what that means is that the concentration of HCN and water should be much higher than the concentrations of hydronium ion and cyanide ion because the strong side wins. In a competition between HCN and H3O plus to see who's going to donate, hydronium ion is going to kick butt and take names. Okay? Things are going to be forced back toward the reactant side. So the reactant side is favored at equilibrium. There's going to be more HCN, water, then hydronium ion and cyanide ion. Okay? Now, let's say that I took O oh, let's see, let's pick a good one. 
H2CO3 aqueous, that's carbonic acid, and I reacted it with the fluoride ion. We would get that into solution as something like sodium fluoride, but the sodium would be a spectator ion, so for this situation, we don't even write it. Okay, so I get HF aqueous and HCO3 1 minus aqueous, the bicarbonate ion. So here's one of our conjugate pairs, here's our other. This is our acid. That would make this the base in that pair. And this is the base. So this is the acid in the pair. So let's compare acids to acids, okay? If I look at HF and H2CO3, HF is our stronger acid. And if we look at F minus in HCO3, one minus, compare our bases, HCO3, one minus is our stronger base. So if we look at our reaction, again, I have the stronger S and the stronger base on the product side that means that the reactant side is favored. Okay? Now, if I give you a weak acid, you ought to be able to tell me what its conjugate base is. If I gave you a weak base or any base, I should be able, you should be able to tell me what its conjugate acid is. So if I have H2SO3 as an acid, its conjugate base should be HSO3 1 minus. If I told you that I had um, CO3 2 minus is a base, its conjugate acid is HCO3 1 minus. Okay? If I have H2CO3, then its conjugate base is HCO3 1 minus. HCO3 1 minus. Okay, just like water is an amphoteric substance. It can act as an acid or a base. So it just depends on what you're treating it as or how you're reacting it, how it's going to behave. Okay, so you ought to be able to, if given an acid, you ought to be able to tell me its conjugate base. Given a base, you ought to be able to tell me its conjugate acid. Now, we're going to spend a little time playing with acids. Let's look at the Joe generic reaction for any acid in water. HA is Joe generic acid plus water liquid is going to go to hydronium ion and an anion. We write the equilibrium expression K is hydronium ion times anion concentration all over HA. Because this K, this equilibrium constant, is for an acid ionization reaction, it's ionizing in water, we call it Ka. The larger the value of the Ka, the stronger the acid. Okay? That makes good sense because we judge the strongness of an acid on how much hydronium ion is produced compared to the initial concentration of the acid. So here we have a list of some acids and their Ka values. Of this list, chlorous acid is the strongest. It's got the largest Ka. Phenolic, uh, phenol down here come on, is the weakest. It's got the smallest Ka. Now I want you to notice 
that out beside the Ka is the pKa. Notice that the strongest acid has the smallest pKa. Weaker acids have larger pKa's. Okay, so don't be thrown if you see those. But here's acids, there's the reactions with water, and there's their Ka values. Now, let's roll this sucker on down. Just want to point out, pKa, P of anything, is the negative log of that. So pKa is the minus log of Ka. So Ka would be 10 to the minus pKa. So just like hydronium ions and pH, the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid. Okay? Because the smaller the pH, the higher the hydronium ion concentration. Now, just like we did last chapter, we can do equilibrium problems for weak acids. So we could be given pH or, or hydronium ion concentration, the initial concentration of the acid, and be asked to find the Ka. Or we could be given Ka and HA initially and have to determine hydronium ion and pH. Okay? Same basic steps apply. We've got a right of balance chemical equation, but this time we have a generic. It's always HA plus plus water giving me hydronium ions and A minus. If you don't know what the formula for the acid is, you can use the generic. You want to write a Ka expression, very simple. Do an ice chart and solve. Now, what's really nice about acid-base chemistry is for the most part, Ka's are pretty small. And 90% of the time, we can make an assumption when we're solving a problem. So it makes our math pretty easy. So let's do a really simple problem. Let's say we're given a 0.600 molar HF solution and a 0.600 molar HCN solution and I want to know what the hydronium ion concentration will be in each case at equilibrium. Okay. So, I've got a 0 0.600 molar HF solution. The reaction is going to be HF aqueous plus water liquid going to H3O plus aqueous plus F minus aqueous. The Ka expression is going to be H3O plus times A minus all over, oh, H3O plus times F minus all over HF. Initial change equilibrium, HF, H3O plus, F minus. We have 0 0.600 of this, 0, 0, minus X plus X plus X. So I have 0 0.600 minus X, X and X. Now, I need the Ka. Okay. The Ka for HF is 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, when I look at this, there's about a thousand fold difference here. The concentration initially of my HF is about a thousand times more than the, than the Ka value. So when I write out the Ka and I plug everything in, I have 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to x times x over 0 0.600 minus x. I am going to assume that 
0 0.600 minus x is approximately 0 0.600. I'm kissing right up against my limit to make this assumption, but I'm going to make it anyway. So 6.8 times 10 to the minus 4 is going to equal x squared over 0 0.600. And of course, I walk down here without my calculator, so I'm going to have to use my phone, which, by the way, is not my favorite calculator. So you can see how you set it up. Now, if we do the same thing with HCN, well, you guys can try HCN. I, on this video thing, since we're not talking back and forth, I don't think I need to run through two examples, but there's one. Okay? Try it with HCN. You've got the HCN same concentration, and look how small the K A is. Okay. You're going to be able to make an assumption. Now I've written it out in the notes for you. You can do practice problems 16.5, 16.6, 1D, and 16.7 on page 703. The answers is in the book. Um, now we're going to do from pH to Ka. We're going to do practice problem 16.7 on page 705. Okay, so let me get this over here. Let's turn on the dock cam. So, let's look, let's look at this problem. 
It says a 0 0.175 molar weak acid solution has a pH of 3.25. Find Ka for the acid. Now, we don't know what the acid is. So we're going to use the generic. Okay, so as we look at this problem, what I'm going to say is that HA plus water gives me H3O plus plus A minus. This is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is liquid, this is aqueous. Ka is H3O plus. A minus all over HA. Initial change equilibrium HA, H3O plus, A minus, zero, zero. And the initial concentration of the acid was given to us as 0 0.175. So it's going to be minus x plus x plus x. So this is 0.175 minus x, x, and x. And we're told that pH here is 3.25. Now, that means I can get the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium. It's just going to be 10 to the minus 3.25. So let's see if my phone will allow me to do that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Any more functions here? No, I do not have powers. Drat it. Okay, so that's what the hydronium ion concentration is going to be, and I don't have my calculator with me. But when you do this, this is x. Okay, once you get x, then you solve for all of these things at equilibrium, and you plug them into the Ka expression. Come on, phone, let me do powers. Kindle. Hmm. Nope, can't do it with this one. But this is X. And you should be able to finish that on out. Okay? But I've set it up for you. All right. Now. How am I doing on time here? Okay, I got a little bit. Let's talk about a polyprotic acid. A polyprotic acid dissolves in water and then reacts in, with water in a stepwise process. Okay? A polyprotic acid has more than one donatable hydrogen, H2SO4. H2CO3, H3PO4, H2SO3. Anything that has more than one donatable hydrogen is a polyprotic acid. When a polyprotic acid dissolves up in water, okay, it's going to first react with water to liberate what hydrogen ions it can liberate from, uh, well, it will give up its first hydrogen, okay? So reacts with water to give up its first hydrogen and create hydronium ions and comes to equilibrium. And then the H2, in this case, PO4-1- reacts with water to produce some hydronium ions and comes to equilibrium. And then the HPO4-2- will react with water and it'll come to equilibrium. And why did you do that to me? Okay. Okay, so the hydrogens are removed in a stepwise fashion. 
each successive equilibrium has its own equilibrium constant and its own Ka, and when each successive hydrogen ion removed, the process gets harder and the Ka's get smaller. For a polyprotic acid solution, the pH depends on the hydrodiums really produced in the first stress. So this is all you really need to do to calculate the hydronium ion concentration in that solution. It's all going to be based on the first ionization energy. Now you may need to know what the concentrations are of all the components in the reaction, uh, but I'm not going to do that. It's just kind of a tedious problem. Now here you have some examples of some polyprotic acids and the successive Ka's. So notice that sulfuric acid, the first Ka, it says strong. That means that it's going to give up its first hydrogen 100%. The second one has a Ka of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay? Oxalic acid, an organic acid, first Ka is 6.0 times 10 to the minus 2. The next one is 6.1 times 10 to the minus 5. Notice that's a thousand fold drop in the value of the Ka. So removing the second hydrogen is much harder. Okay? Sulfurous acid, H2SO3, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2, 6.4 times 10 to the minus 8. That's a 10 to the 6 drop in strength. Notice with phosphoric, it gets harder. Okay? So the first hydrogen to pop off or to be removed is the one that's going to control the pH because you're dealing with the strongest acid out of the sequence of acids. Now it's on to bases. I think this is probably a good place for me to stop this lecture and then we'll pick up with bases next time.